Hello guys, Hello. welcome. Woo. Welcome to the Hispanic Heritage Month. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. We're gonna do a little interview just to get to know a little bit more about you and about your background. Uh, we're gonna start with a couple of questions. Our first question would be, what is your name and what is your role in school? Okay, you can pick, anybody can start. I'll start. So my name is Marta Jimenez. I am the third grade um, ELA social studies teacher. Um, my name is Agneris Miguel, third grade ELA social studies. Hi. And my name is Pamela Vasquez, third grade math and science. All right, thank you. Can you please tell me where were you born? I'll start again. So that way we can just go yes. to right? So I, um, I was born in Santiago de los Caballeros, uh, Dominican Republic. Yes. Okay. That's a good question, right? Where, yes, where was yes, I born? Where were you born? Uh -huh. Hi, Leo, Florida. Hi, Leo. Hi, Leo. <laughs> I was born in uh, Texas. Oh, okay. you were? Yeah, I'm from Houston. All right. right. So, um, can you tell me what is your family's country of origin? Right? So, it's going to be. I'm Dominican. Dominican, yeah. okay. Cuban. Cuban? And Mexico. All right, perfect. Um, can you tell me how long have you lived in the United States? Or in case it is an idea you were born here, your parents. How long have your parents been in the United States? I've been here for 27 years, living in this country. All right. I'll start doing some math for the case. My parents came, they're in their 60s now. They came at 15 and 13. Papi came to Jersey, and then mommy moved here to Hialeah. And we were the first born, the first, well, my brother and I were the first U.S. born. The first generation. Yeah, first oh. generation. Okay. And I've been here my whole life, my, my parents and my grandparents as well. So we go through that. Oh, okay. All right, so um, how have you always known English or Spanish? And how did you learn either English or Spanish? Uh, so because I came in as an immigrant, I was an ESO student when I first came in at 15. Um, and it was a struggle, so I did not know the language. And but I got adjusted and started talking and getting in trouble was I was well I was talking but <laughs> you have to get it done. Exactly. <laughs> let it let it out there, I know. <laughs> um I grew up speaking Spanish, um, but mommy started kind of forcing us to speak English too, so we came in I don't remember if I was Diesel. But um I did read a lot of like reading in Spanish and writing in Spanish and my grandparents kind of pushed me more on it than my brother. Um, I know mommy um, also had the same problem in school and high school. She got in trouble a lot because she was trying to speak the language. And I remember she said a, a lot of times they would get mad at her because she just didn't understand. And there wasn't, I guess the ESOL program wasn't really good at that. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, so I spoke Spanish and then a little bit little bit. Oh. I only spoke English um, in the schools in Texas. They didn't allow you to speak Spanish at all, so everyone spoke English. Wow. I didn't learn Spanish really until I got to Miami. Oh, wow. And it was oh. hard. Oh. <laughs> there was a lot of different dialects going on. Yeah. There. Yeah. Oh, wow. But yeah. how, I, how I learned it, um, mostly songs and watching the TV. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's the same thing for me, but in English. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, can you guys tell me what motivates you or your family to come to the United States? A better lifestyle. Not, well, better come to a country that has like um, a diverse culture that you can learn from. Like when I came here, I, I thought that you are so isolated when you live in your own country that you don't know that there are all their cultures or all the races. And when you come here, it's so rich. And it takes you a lot. You, I, I was not aware of everything, but the world was so big, pretty yeah. much. And for a better life, lifestyle. Exactly. Um, my family, both mom and dad, were um, leaving because of the when the communism started. So I'm trying to remember. I know they came legally. They came, they came on a plane. I don't know if it was a bomba or the lottery or something. But I know they were there when things were already strict. Because mommy talked about making like blocks and blocks of like a line for get, to get ice cream and like she kind of she's told me stories and I know they had a farm and then how they lost the farm so I know they came early on the transition a little pushed to like get them out as soon as possible and my feel couldn't come to me in 
manager, so they had to go. But oh. they were allowed to leave somehow. Oh. But it was the the communism that they were speaking to the start of this. And I was born in the part of Texas where originally was Mexico, but a long time before we came to the United States, so everyone that was there became a citizen. So my grand, my great grandparents and everybody's out here. Oh, here. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about traditions. Okay, what would be a Hispanic tradition that you learned from your parents that you would like to pass down into your family? Okay. Huh? Lechon asado. Lechon asado. Yes. Asado. Yes. <laughs> I'm very big in my family is on Lent and like the Holy Week, we oh. respect it to the max. So we do the Wednesday and Fridays and we meet for four days and then we do like the Holy Week is like religiously and I have told that to my children, my grandmother saw me and I hope it passed it down to their children. Oh. Um, the only one I can think of is that we celebrate the Dia de los Muertos, which is the day after oh, Halloween, yes. where we celebrate the, de the death that have passed by cathedrals and stuff. We oh. do that a lot. Big element. Um, that's a beautiful. That's a beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah, a lot of fun too. Yeah. To remember the people in a positive way. Exactly. All right. Thank you. That's amazing. Okay. So, um, can you guys tell me what do you think are some things that make Hispanic culture special? How diverse we are. I mean, music, all the genres that we collaborate and bring to this country, the food. How can you live without Mexican food? I was telling her that I cook Mexican food for like three times a week in my house. I learned how to make arepas, venezolanas, like, and ropa vieja. Like, it's like so much to eat from and the music and stuff. I think we uh, we collaborate and contribute a lot to this community. Maybe. Spice it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. right. Oh, a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. There's just so much diversity within the cultures that it's just, and you kind of like pick up on each other. So, yeah. I think, yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yes, thank you. Okay, so what is a phrase or a saying um, that reminds you of your country? Any expression that you use that reminds you of your um, country? Mojito. Guajira. <laughs> okay. My mom used to always say que ella guajira. Like she's a farm. She grew up on the farm. No, I don't know, but we Dominicans love to use the word bueno, and we say bueno. <laughs>